Okay. Great. We're all Sorry, here. That's a yeah, I'm trying to get it on my computer and it won't work. Okay. Well, we can hear you and we can see you, so we're going to get started. Okay. Great. Well, listen, everybody, welcome. People are still arriving, but um, we love to stay on time, so we are going to get started. Um, I want to say, first of all, happy spring, happy March, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I don't see everybody wearing green. I had the only green thing that I have today on. Um, I am Irish. I wish I could go to the bar and drink green beer like everybody else used to, but uh, maybe next. Um, first of all, welcome. I am your moderator today. I am Trudy Shree. I am the co-founder of Marketing Free CPs. We are a digital marketing agency for iCare. Um, I absolutely want to thank our sponsor, Johnson & Johnson Vision. We could not do all these wonderful webinars without you, so thank you so much for your support today. Um, we have a great lineup. I'm going to let them introduce themselves in a sec, uh, but I am honored to be the moderator with this amazing panel today. I know all three of these optometrists. I can attest to the fact that they are some of the best uh, practice owners and, and business people in general that I have ever worked with. And I'm excited that they are going to share the secrets to how they have grown a thriving contact lens business. Um, I do want to mention that there is a chat feature. So please, first off, say hello. Where are you from? Uh, feel free to ask questions during the entire panel discussion. I will interject them during the panel if we're not going to get to them. And we will save a little bit of time at the end as well to answer a few more. So let's get started. I want to introduce this amazing panel. We are going to be asking them a ton of great questions. I want them to each come on and tell you a little bit about themselves and their practice. And we're going to start with Dr. McCann. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's uh, Wes McCann. I'm uh, an optometrist in, uh, I practice in London, Ontario, Canada. Um, <clears throat> I'm a professional consultant for Johnson & Johnson and a KOL for uh, a number of other companies like Zeiss, Laptician, um, uh, Oculus, uh, and a few others. And uh, I own six practices in southwestern Ontario. Uh, I've got about 10 uh, associates and about uh, a little over 50 or 60 staff um, combined. And uh, uh, my downtown London practice, we do a lot of dry eye disease uh, with IPL, Lipoflow, radiofrequency, and do some aesthetics as well. Uh, and concentrate as well on, on contact lens and myopia control. Uh, here as well. So that's a little bit about me. I oh, went to Nova, Nova Southeastern University in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale for optometry. Yeah, I swear every time I talk to Dr. McCann, he is acquiring a new practice. So <laughs> he is expanding like no one is expanding. Um, let's move over to Dr. Shen Li. Hi everyone, my name is Bridget Shen Li. I am an optometrist in Houston, Texas. Uh, I only have one practice. Uh, Dr. Wes, I'm impressed. And it sounds like you and I need to do like a serve on a dry panel together. So sure. my practice is uh, 20, almost 22 years old. I do have a business partner. We went to school together at University of Houston College of, of Optometry. And we opened Vision Optique uh, together being, being at the same location. Um, we have total four doctors, about 12 team member, and it is a very busy primary care practice with uh, lots of regular exams and contact lens uh, and three subspecialties. One is dry eye disease. So I'm the in-house dry eye uh, expert. My business partner, Dr. Owens, is the scleral lens king, uh, everything specialty contact lens. And my young doctor, Dr. Jennifer Sheen, who worked for me for 10 years before she became a doctor, she is our in-house myopia management uh, specialist. So those are the specialties that we have. And thank you, Trudy, for having us, um, for inviting us to the panel. And thank you all, everyone for joining. I know some of you are texting me and messaging me. So I definitely want to welcome the guests who are logging in from Asia, from, uh, e uh, from Europe, and from Canada. 
thank you all so much for joining us. Yeah, in case you didn't know, we're a global panel today. We've got people from all over the place. It's great. Um, I'm excited to get Dr. Bishop to tell you a little bit about him, but I have to tell you, I have known Dr. Bishop for a long time. In fact, it goes back probably 20 years. Um, when I uh, was a contact lens rep and um, Dr. Bishop was one of my clients and I truly started to realize what an amazing practice he practices, he ran and how he grew his contact lens business back then and is still growing it. Um, so Dr. Bishop, tell everybody a little bit about you. I graduated from University of Waterloo and I won't tell you the year to tell you how old I am. Uh, it's been a few years. I have four offices where we see patients in Calgary and then one administrative office there are about 69 staff and 12 doctors, and uh, we see patients uh, at three of the offices seven days a week um, and in reduced hours and capacity right now due to COVID, but we are surviving and uh, uh, doing okay. Great. Thank you. You know, it is an interesting times, right? And every practice owner that I talk to is going through something a little different. But I guess the great news is, is that most practice owners say that they're fairly busy right now and fairly booked. So that is great to hear with these vaccines on the horizon. Hopefully that means that we're going to be starting to get back to some type of normal business. I'm going to start by asking you all the same question, and then we're going to dive into a little bit of individual questions. But I guess the first one is, why build a contact lens focused clinic? Um, you know, and maybe we could start with you, Dr. Bishop. Why focus on contacts? Well, I was back in the old day when we would charge $250 for one pair of lenses. <laughs> and so the profit was very good. And... Um, the main place you could get contact lenses was from your doctor. Uh, so it was very profitable. And then, and I didn't like dispensing. And I uh, decided I was going non-dispensing. And then the uh, contact lenses were basically the profit. Uh, regular business paid for the bills, but then if you didn't have the contact lens sales, uh, there was really no profit there. Uh, as the margins have become slimmer, uh, I decided, well, I better get back into dispensing. So I opened an office where we're also dispensing. So that's the that's the 35 year trip there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get into a few more questions with you in a few minutes about how you've grown your contact lenses because it's pretty amazing. Um, Dr. Shenley, can you tell us a little bit of why focus on contact lenses? Um, when my business partner and I opened our practice, so we graduated in 1998. Um, when we opened our practice one year after graduation, uh, at the time, within just two mile radius from where we plan to open our practice, the competition, this includes ophthalmologists, optometrists, opticians, um, plus one of the largest ODMD groups and the two medical school uh, is uh, pretty fierce. It's about close to 40. T today, it's like double that. It's almost 80, right? So we knew we had to do something different. And we both enjoyed a contact lens. We're lab partners in school. So at that time, yes, we're old enough to have fitted the very first uh, daily disposable. So Focus Dailies was one of the earliest daily disposable contact lens. So we decided to open our practice focused on innovation and technology. Because at that time, the two week modality was like what everyone else is doing. So we intentionally opened our practice focusing on daily disposable and uh, on, on the material, which is silicon hydrogel. So we focused on innovation and service. And this will lead into one of my answers that Chudi is going to ask me later. And so today we are almost, uh, let me give you the exact percentage. I looked at the number. So our daily uh, penetration is 85.4%. This is as of um, when I pull up the report on OGP last uh, yesterday. 
for 2020, our daily penetration is 84.2%. But this is 22 years of intentionally building it. I'll, I'll get into more details later. Great. I love that. Um, Dr. McCann, tell us a little bit of why you you did build a contact lens focused clinic clinics. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So it's uh, it's interesting because over the we all have different perspectives and we all came into contact lenses at different points in our career. Um, I mean, I graduated in 2012, and uh, and when I graduated, been building our practices since. But contact lenses is a huge part of our business, and uh, we do over half a million dollars in contacts a year between four of our five practices. So to give you an example, with 10 doctors, we do over half a million in contacts. And I know um, when you really actually look and take a deep dive at the numbers, there is profitability in contacts, um, especially in the daily disposable realm. So uh, we do uh, 80% or over 80% of our daily disposable or of our contacts or daily disposables um, at my one practice. And we vary from the uh, 40 to 80 percent of the other ones. So, but we've been growing in that daily disposable realm uh, throughout uh, our entire history. So, uh, it it is a, a huge part of the practice, and we talk to every patient about contact uh, that we think is an eligible candidate. So, uh, I think it's a it's a, an enormous part of the practice that can be very profitable and can drive your patients to be profitable patients in your practice and make them happy patients as well and improve their quality of life as well. Right. My next question is actually coming to you as well. But before we dive into that, um, you know, you mentioned something and that is that you mentioned contact lenses to every single one of your patients. I read a stat from the Vision Council, you know, market survey, and it's a Canadian stat that says only 14% of Canadians, and I think it was 14.7% of Americans wear contact lenses, which really surprised me. Does that surprise you? It does, because when you look at your schedule, you see a number of contact lens patients on your schedule or on our schedule every day. Uh, so uh, to only be 14%, yeah, it surprised me, but I think there's huge opportunities that are out there that we haven't really discussed with patients. So I would say at least a third of my contact lens patient, if uh, patient practice, if not more, uh, are, are people over the age of 40 that are in multifocal contacts. And I think that is a huge opportunity for us to, uh, to capture on uh, because those patients, a lot of them grew up with contacts and then a lot of them haven't had the discussion about multifocals or just assume they can't use them anymore because they need readers. So there is a huge opportunity um, for patients, I think, uh, to increase from that 14%. I mean, we're definitely well over 14% of our, our patient practices in contacts. Uh, and a lot of them are occasional wearers as well. And now that we have a, such wide array of daily disposables available from multifocals to a stig to spherical, we have such a great opportunity to get a lot more patients that would want to be occasional wearers back into contact, uh, especially with the more advanced, comfortable daily sci highs that are available now. Yeah. There's great options for patients. Well, you, you do think that with the technology, the materials, the modalities available, even, you know, the ability to treat dry eye, which is a comfort issue, that over 50% of, of people who have a vision correction could be a candidate, right? Absolutely, yeah. There's, yeah. there's such good opportunities for people. And, uh, and like you said, innovation is great. And companies like J&J, &J, who's sponsoring today, have been fantastic with innovation. They've come out with new contacts every year for the last number of years um, with new revolutionary uh, types of lenses. So there's great innovation that's available. And if you talk to your patients about it, they get excited about it and they come to you for innovation. They, they want to know what's new every year. So you have right. the opportunity to impress your patients with innovation all the time. Yes. And um, the question that I had to you was, you know, given the pandemic and COVID-19, has it affected contact lens patients? Has it affected how you're fitting them, training them? Um, have it, has it affected anything in their purchasing behavior? So I would say it's changed behavior. Um, I wouldn't say it's hindered our ability necessarily to still get patients into contacts, um, but it's changed our behavior and patient's behavior, yes. So uh, it's interesting because there's a bit of a dichotomy. We either have patients in contacts a lot more because they 
their glasses are driving them nuts with fogging, or we have patients that are in contact less because they're working from home every day and they're not going out and they just wear their glasses. So we've got this dichotomy of patients that seem to exist right now. Um, but uh, it's definitely changed our approach to patients. I mean, there's everyone has, has had to change their flow with, um, with COVID. So certainly we've changed that. Um, sanitizing procedures are different. Um, safety precautions that are in place for our trainers and such is different with the face, uh, face shield and goggles and gloves and masks and, and et cetera. Uh, we do utilize digital technology a lot more. So uh, prior to a patient coming in for a contact lens teach, we send them an email with links to videos on how to do a contact lens teach uh, so that they get information prior to coming in with hopefully minimizing the amount of chair time that we have for the teach. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities that we've, um, lots of ways we've changed our flow and incorporated technology to improve the patient's experience and improve uh, our processes so that we can still fit contact safely and uh, and get those patients into what they want to wear. Great. We are going to get into technology in a little bit too, so we'll get you to chat about that, but thank you very much. Um, Dr. Bishop, I'm, next question is for you. So, you know, you hear all the time about training your staff and training uh, even your doctors in the exam room to recommend an annual supply. So upsell to an annual supply. I mean, it's easy to say that. It's easy to train on it. It's still something that a lot of practices struggle with. I personally know that your practices are some of the best when it comes to um, upselling to an annual supply. Can you give us a few of your secrets and tips? Okay, first of all, um, we... Uh in the month of February of our full-time contact lens wearers, 88% of them bought ear supplies. Wow. So that's just a stat from February. And as far as uh, whether we don't recommend, so we, are tr we try to, the biggest thing we do is train, then train, then follow up, then train, then follow up. And one of the things is to take the word recommend out of everybody's vocabulary, starting right in the doctor's room. So in the doctor's room, we ask the doctors to prescribe enough contact lenses for the person to have until their next yearly eye exam. And then we book the next year's eye exam. And usually people are out of lenses. Um, in February, 12% weren't. So um, we usually, when they come up to the front, the doctor will have prescribed a year supply in the exam room. Then they come up to the front desk and they say, Mrs. Jones will need another year supply of contact lenses. And with those contact lenses, she'll need, you know, these other things. And then the staff just presents it as a year supply. If the patient gives pushback, then we can talk about other options. And one of the other options would be talking about subscription programs that we have, um, or we have a layaway program, if you will. So then we try and get everybody into one of those. And then if they don't buy that, then we do follow up with the patient. We follow up and sometimes the patient would only buy six months, and then we follow up with the patient by phone call and say, I don't know if you knew or not, uh, but you left some money sitting on the table, basically, and explain to them how it would be cheaper. And then we can upgrade them to the full year supply that way. And so it's, it's basically all in training. And we sell year supplies to part-time wearers, too, because... Uh, of the price savings they can make. We structure our price that the year supply is cheaper than buying just one or two boxes. And so that they save because our expense on one box or two boxes is the same as if we sell them eight boxes. So it's the same um, administrative cost. And so it's just all training we have contact lens specialists. After COVID, we realized our year supply percentage was not where it should be. So we started training some contact lens specialists. 
And after we trained them, we found that they were doing better than the other people in the office. So then we started training more and more. But then we follow up weekly with them as what their statistic results are and giving encouragement. And right now we only have one person who is not doing well. She's at 67% year supplies. And so we're working with her and then she'll get up to 85 and then 90, then she'll drop back down. So the follow-up is crucial. I have to say, I have seen your training programs in action. I have, I have been a part of them, you know, in years past. You do such an amazing job of training your staff. And when you say encouragement, it's so true. Like you, you hold them accountable. You teach them, you hold them accountable. In some cases, you hold their hand through it. And then you reward them when they do well. Yeah. Yeah, we have fun with the rewards and the programs and stuff like that, you know, so we make it fun for them and we make it rewarding for them. And so, you know, they get spiffs for your supplies and, and this and that. And uh, we've even had competitions where we give away trips to Vegas, uh, different things like that. But the success of any program depends upon the follow up that you do as the administrative people. And the Showtime uh, presentation that you gave to us about 18 years ago, we still, we still use that. And it's a saying in our office, it's Showtime. Time. Oh boy, that's an old one. That, I used to train on a customer service program, which is what Dr. Bishop is talking about a long time ago. And yes, they still use it, it's Showtime. Um, maybe we'll train on that here one day. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Um, I, before I move on to Dr. Shen Li, I do, uh, there's been a lot of people arriving. And in case you didn't hear, number one is we've got a chat feature and I am monitoring it right now. I will watch for some questions that I can ask this panel. So feel free to use it. We'll leave a few minutes at the end as well for some extra questions. And we do have a very special giveaway at the end of every one of our webinars these days. So stay tuned. This is being recorded as well. So for some reason, you have to run to a patient and you miss it, come back, watch the recording, and you'll be able to access the giveaway at that time. Dr. Shenley, I know I, I love your practice. It is so different from a lot of other practices. Um, you obviously see the value of moving into new medical niches and directions. I would love for you to tell us why more of a specialty contact lens focus for you. Um, okay, so at this, with, when you say specialty, you also mean multifocal and astigmatism, right? Not just like scleral lenses and, okay. Um, so um, my, I actually have a pre-typed answer. So I'll talk about the mainstream contact lens first, and then I'll move into that specialty, specialty contact lens. Okay, so for mainstream contact lens, this is soft contact lens. I think Dr. West summarized it, and you did too, uh, Trudy, is right, it's all about technology innovation. So I think as optometrists, especially primary eye care optometrists, it's very important that we get really good at prescribing innovation and sharing with the patients why. So my own patients are so well-trained. If I don't tell them something new, they're like, okay, did nothing come out this past year? How come you're not telling me something new? So we've always as a practice uh, firmly believe that it is our job as doctors to prescribe the latest and the greatest and the reasons um, behind it. So we usually tell the patients, the reason we're giving you the latest in this daily disposable, it's because they're the healthiest and the most comfortable and the most convenient option. And it is up to the patients to decide what they are willing to pay but it is our job to let the patients try what the latest and the greatest technology is. They may not commit to it the first year, but at least they know what that feels like. So number one, number two uh, is um, we actually 
for, because our practice is pretty busy, and I know the limitation of the current daily disposable trial boxes. Now the four companies have listened. They're still sending trials, a little strip of five in one box. So in a busy practice, that doesn't work. So what we did for our practice is we actually build our own diagnostic wall. When I say wall, I mean entire wall. So for single vision and a multifocal contact lens, uh, with our chosen product that we fit the patients with, we have 50 to 60 trials per SKU for, uh, uh, for contact lens for astigmatism correction. So we only have two walls. We have the My Day Toric and the Oasis One Day for astigmatism. We actually, we build the diagnostic wall where we have every single SKU that's available. So we have 75 cell, one a quarter, 175, 225, and every quarter diopter step. So what that means is on the day we see the patients for astigmatism, single vision, the fitting is done that day. And we order contact lens that day. For patients with multifocal, brand new patients, I do bring them back for follow-up. All my multifocal patients have my direct work email because the follow-ups are usually done by... Um, email communication or a communication directly with my, my staff. And number three, uh, the, our utilization, like patients purchase from us is very high. It's because we, uh, since 2017, so 17, 18, 19, 20, so this is year five now, we've been using a contact lens management and ordering service. So the company that we use is called CLX and they work with uh, all the major distribution groups. So the distribution company we currently use is a OGP. So for our patients, what we've noticed is 40 and older, well, mid thirties and older are usually, especially families where the parents, are, uh, the patients are parents, they usually come into your supply very easily because they want the convenience. My uh, late teen, early 20s to early 30s, those are the patients that usually buy just three months because they're in daily disposable. They just they want what the insurance covers. But our system is set up where they t get an automatic text for email and to remind them to reorder. And that's that whole entire system is automated now. So I, I definitely like the tips I earned. Uh, I learned from Dr. Bishop on increased annual supply. I think Dr. Bishop needs to come train my staff or well, send my staff to Dr. Bishop to train. But we definitely have a purchase habit difference in uh, what our patients do. So let me give you an example. Uh, our direct to ship to patient percentage is very high. So at the end of 2020, our direct shipping to patient is 76.41%. So this year, year to date, direct shipping to patient, it's 81.09%. It's because we have an automated system set up. So why specialty contact lens? Uh, my business partner loves everything gas perm. So uh, I don't personally like gas perm, but I love dry disease patients. He does not want to spend the time. He sends me all his dry patients. I send him all my keratoconus or uh, corneal dystrophy uh, specialty contact lens. So uh, that's a niche. I think it has to be a doctor that really enjoys it. Absolutely, for sure. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Shenley. I'm going to move over to back to Dr. McCann for a minute. Um, thinking about your four practices, is it five now? It's five. Six. How many? Five. Six. Six. Six, Six as of last uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> um, Obviously, you have to have some kind of system to take this multiple amount of practices and grow a contact lens niche within them or any niche, really, any, anything you want to grow. You have to develop some experts within your practice and some systems. Can you give us some tips? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> we, we do have a training uh, lead that we utilize, uh, a person that trains at multiple offices. So that makes a, a huge difference, but uh, definitely utilizing your reps. There's some fantastic reps that are out there that can assist in some training in your practices, but uh, really creating a champion in each practice is, is super important. And uh, we utilize uh, YouTube videos. So we record uh, YouTube videos and post them on a, a YouTube um, channel for our staff to be able to use to uh, log into and, and update their, their knowledge on different, uh, different parts of uh, different aspects of the business. Um, but uh, training your staff specifically to contacts, 
uh, you need to make sure all your front staff, front desk staff are experts on contacts because they answer the phone all the time when patients are calling to pick or uh, order new contacts. They check patients in and out. They are your go-to uh, to, to purchase contacts. And you have to make sure you train your associates and your ODs as well because it starts with them. And I think Dr. Bishop made a great point with that is you have to prescribe to your patient enough lenses to last them until they see you again because you lose control of that patient after if they purchase a six month supply and they wear them every day and they're not seeing you for a year or two years. So making sure that you are recapturing that patient and, and prescribe enough to, to last until that, that next time. Um, so making sure the front desk staff understand that and your associates also understand that. Um, and then walking the patient, the ODs walking the patient up to the desk and checking out and saying, so-and-so is going to go ahead with uh, your supply of contacts uh, we discussed. Uh, so if you could process that for the patient, that would be great. And then you walk away. That handover is extremely important because if you don't do that handover, you lose again that control there. Um, and then training our staff on what we offer. And again, uh, for patients, it's about, it's not just price, it's all about value. And patients look for value. And all sorts of things come into value. So certainly price is a component. Um, like uh, Dr. Shenley mentioned, the shipping directly to patients, the convenience is certainly value. Um, we offer a 30-day price match guarantee on an annual supply of lenses. Uh, so again, it encourages that year supply purchase. Uh, but in now seven years, I've had five patients price match. And they've been anywhere from $6 to $30. So again, we know we're competitive. We don't price ourselves cheap, but we know we're competitive in the marketplace on a year supply of lenses after rebate. So, and again, your profitability still, you have a good profitability margin on that. Uh, most contact lens uh, companies are uh, above 40%. So you can have a good profit margin on your contacts and still be uh, uh, capturing the maximum that you can for your patients. Uh, also training your patients or your staff rather that it's less work to do an annual supply and to ship them to a patient because they enjoy it when it's not as busy and they're not running their butts off to try to keep up. So again, if you can show them it's less work to prescribe an annual supply to a patient and ship it to them and encourage that, the patient's not coming back to pick them up. You're not having to unpackage anything. It takes 30 minutes almost from start to finish to process a contact lens order. So if you're doing that twice a year for every patient, that's a lot of work. If you're doing it once a year or once every two years, uh, if they're an occasional wear, only wear them half the time, but you can sell them an annual supply, that's a lot less work for your staff. So again, showing them the advantages for them and the advantages to the practice and the advantages to the patient and the value all the way around, I think is so important and making sure you have that transparent conversation with, with your staff and, and they get jazzed and excited about being contact lens champions and uh, improving uh, the capture rate. Again, our capture rate is really quite high with our uh, contact lens patients uh, because we prescribe them to the patient on the way out. We go through all the advantages. We have our online web store and our online web store automatically reminds them because we can put in their wearing schedule. So uh, we can put in, you know what, this patient only wears their contacts three days a week and they've purchased a, a six month or annual supply and it'll calculate when that patient should be out. And a month before we'll email them to remind them, hey, you know what, you should consider purchasing, contact, purchasing contacts again because we think you're out. It also does it with our dry eye product. So there's a lot of good, uh, the store is called Sightly. It's uh, getting quite big here in Canada, um, moving into the U.S. as well. So there, there's a, quite a, a nice opportunity, again, for convenience and value for your patients. So you train your patients to do the same thing all the time. We're going to get into e-commerce in a sec here because yes, we, I know. we, we want to <laughs> expand on that and because I don't, I, I don't want to miss expanding on e-commerce because I do think it's such an opportunity for sure. I love the tip about training your associates because I think in a lot of practices miss that step, right? Is we do a good job maybe of training staff and, and how to sell contacts on the phone and how to, you know, do it at the front desk, but it is so important to train your associates. So love that tip. And Dr. Bishop, we're coming over to you. So I have to say, like, when I was a contact lens rep, I was so impressed with some of Dr. Bishop's just innovative business strategies. Um, he had one of the biggest inventories in my territory. And, you know, just 
implemented a lot of great business ideas when it came to growing this contact lens business. And so I thought I'd just see if there's a few that you want to share, Dr. Bishop. Um, someone told me not to tell any trade secrets, but <laughs> um, I, I, from what Dr. McCann said, training the, our associates is a lot harder than training our staff. We can mold our staff much easier than we can our doctors. And so a lot of our programs that we've done to improve things has been through working mostly with the staff. And so the biggest one being like we we're talking about is the training. So right now, as we speak here in the other room here, I have three people from the offices up being trained by our trainer to how to improve their contact lens sales. Um, and that's the main thing that we do. Um, however, we'll have things like we'll have walkabout month. What walkabout month is, uh, we want to have people uh, who are maybe nervous about trying contact lenses. Well, what, you're here today. Why don't we put a contact lens in your eye and let you walk around the mall and then come back and we'll take it out and then we can go from there. And so we'll have walkabout months where uh, the staff will get uh, rewards for every walkabout that they create. So in the pre-test at the front desk and at checkout and the doctors are all doing that. We'll team up doctors with staff. Um, we will, one time, the one thing they liked is for every walkabout that they created or every year supply they did, then they got a number on the bingo card. And underneath the bingo card, there would be a, a type of little reward that they would get. Um, We've had uh, different promotions on selling year supplies and the people who get the most get rewards, but then we have draws. So that way everyone keeps on trying. Um, but it's all, all comes back to training and follow up and letting them know. So on our promos, we let them know every day where everybody stands and where they stand. And so that helps encourage them. Can you talk to, because I remember how you used to effectively price things. So it's almost like you would do it in a way that, and you would be able to present it in a way that's a bit of a no brainer for the patient to see the value of purchasing an annual supply. You used to do it with nutraceuticals and drops and solutions and everything, you know, including contact lenses. Can you chat to that a little bit? Yeah, when, when we uh, present now, what we'll do is we'll go about a year supply and then we'll show them the savings that they make from buying it, let's say just two boxes, okay? So, you know, two boxes are gonna cost you $100 eight boxes are only going to cost you $300, for instance. So what do you want to do? You want to buy two boxes and then you're going to spend $400 or buy the year supply and get 300. You're going to use them. It's not like you don't wear them every day. And so you might as well save the money. And so if a person doesn't buy a year supply, we'll call them back and say, you know, look, you know, you're, you're saving some money. So we have it down on, um, we have a, uh, it down on the computer that we can show them, um, on, on uh, printouts that we can show the patient, and we can email them stuff and showing them the difference. And then recently we've went to adding in, if they talk about the internet, we have the internet's current prices. And we show them the internet's current prices compared to our yearly supply. And if our years, if, the per box price of a year supply after manufacturer's rebate, if we're not better, then we change our price, okay? And so it's always, uh, it's always showing what they could save versus buying individual ones too. Great, perfect. Yes, I was gonna ask you about comparing against the internet. I think it's so important for your staff to know how your prices compare. Because in a lot of ways, once you apply the rebate, once you apply the annual 
bulk savings, your prices can be even lower than some of the, the ones on the internet right now. So that's great, thank you. Um, Dr. Shenley, first off, I want to say that um, we have the pleasure of working with all three of you on your marketing. So thank you, I love working with you guys on your marketing. Um, I'm going to ask a marketing question. So Dr. Shinley, can you give us an idea of how you market contact lenses internally, externally, socially? Okay, I'm going to break it down into internally and externally. And on my internally, I'm actually taking off one because Dr. West and Dr. Bishop had covered it really well. Staff training, staff training, staff training. So what I'll do for internal, I'm going to give three very specific examples of how to improve the process and save time. So our practice is 1,800 square feet. Uh, according to Texas standard, it's very small. According to New York standard, it's huge. Okay, so we have two exam lanes and we have a, our 56 square feet closet is converted into my dry room. It houses IPL, lipid flow, huge TV, slit lamp with a camera and a very comfortable chair. That's all I can put in that room. So all the diagnostic sets and walls that we've built are in the hallway in the exam rooms. So it's really important, especially with daily disposable because you can't fit a, a patient if you don't have the trial. So uh, the system that we designated uh, so number one, we have one designated staff whose primary responsibility is accuracy and ordering all the trials and also ordering contact lens from the management system and a watch is a back order. Because of the pandemic, back order has been a major issue, I think, with all distributors. So she coordinates, checks them and communicates with the patients. And it's not just let the patient know, we're sorry, this is on back order for six weeks, but also offering a solution that can work for the patient. So for example, we're opening Tuesday through Saturday. So we only order trials Tuesdays to Fridays. So we divide it alphabetical, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days. So I'll come Tuesday, Bosch, it's alphabetical, Bosch Wednesday, Cooper Thursday, J&J Friday. So she's only doing check all the holes, trials in one day. And also what we do is if it's a, a astigmatism and a multifocal, we actually turn in the little box so she knows what we took, but she also goes in and check it. Number one, number two, um, the rebates. This is where you can utilize your reps. We love our reps and our reps love coming to our office and they do help us train the staff because the rebates change about uh, twice a year. So. The, depends on which company, they usually can come up sort of like a laminated sheet based on your own pricing. And the patients can just present if it's a, let's say, daily total multifocal or J and J, or is this one day for astigmatism? It's pre calculated, pre done, that information is updated. The patients present, uh, you have VSP, and for six month supply, for year supply, this is where we always prescribe your supply. I completely agree with the other two panelists, but not all the patients choose to do so. The staff is ready to have that conversation and a lot of work is pre-done. And uh, uh, number three is um, on the shipping. The reason our shipping charge is so high, uh, same thing, uh, once a quarter we go in. So the person who's in charge of the contact lens ordering knows with each company, what is the minimum you have to purchase to qualify for free shipping, free direct shipping to patient. So that person knows that dollar amount exactly. So for example, 330 packs. So uh, if it's a young 21 year old who only wants three months supply, Oh, is this one day for astigmatism? I, I don't know the new numbers. I'm, I'm going to use the old one. Okay, so before it became a 90 pack. So if they get six, three months supply, it's 630 packs, dollar amount wise, that's enough for the patient to get free shipping. So she types out a, a half a page summary that's literally taped beneath the keyboard of the two front desk uh, ladies. So they can literally just glance down that they know exactly depends on the product, what the free shipping is. So these are specific examples. So as business owners, it's important for us to help our staff to come up with the process to create the process, then you teach that process and we update on a regular basis. Okay, for external, I, I know I'll get all the social media questions. So for external, uh, I mentioned earlier, we have automatic reorder through the CLX system. So that's 
that's automatic. That's already done. But what we do for external marketing is uh, one thing, as Trudy mentioned, we did build a brand new website. That was my year 2020 big project with an online store. So we actually use our online store for um, all the over-the-counter product because I run a very active uh, dry eye practice. A third of my clinic time are dedicated to dry eye patients and I prescribe a ton of product and we retail uh, everything I prescribe to the patient. Um, so we do have contact lens reordering on the online store, but actually it's linked to our CLX because that system is set up. And the third is it's really important, right? All the wonderful things we do, our patients will come into the office know about it, but what about the people who are not our patients, right? So we've got to become really, really good at telling the stories. So, um, one of the things that we do on our Instagram page, we have very active Instagram and the Facebook page. Things are organized by album on Facebook and Instagram we have these little story buttons. There's literally a button called innovation. So let me give you an example. The latest innovation that came to office, this was a couple of weeks ago, is the AcuV Oasis for uh, Presbyopia. So we got the trial set and uh, the, the rep knew what day was going to come. So we're one of the earliest practice to receive. So the lunch was set. So we had fun creating stories, creating social media posts. So all of these are uh, available. It's just look up Vision Optique. You can see um, the reasons why we have one of the most active uh, social media presence. It's because there's always fresh content. You got to make it fun. But the patients very clearly come away from, wow, this practice always have the latest and the greatest and we talk about it with the patients and we fit them and patients in turn start using their platform hey you need to go to this place they have this they have that oh my gosh i love this and then that's how we grow and get new patients because we don't spend any money um uh, marketing it's all word of mouth and our social media presence great well she does spend a little bit of money with with us <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other money we spend is with the marketing for ECP. <laughs> um, the one, two things about Dr. Shen Lee is first off, she is a huge Instagram influencer in this industry. You should follow her. Can you put your handle in the sure. chat? chat sure. box? I'll put my handle in the chat box. 34,000 followers. That's pretty impressive. That's yeah. really enough to, my personal has over 60. Yeah, she's, she's busy. <laughs> and the other thing is check out her new website. She, she and us built her a very cool dry eye center on her website. Um, she wrote a lot of the content, but yeah, check it out. It's pretty cool. I'll, I'll put in the chat box. Okay, do that. And um, I'm going to move to a question to all three. We're kind of coming down to the end here. I want to save a few minutes and, and I see Wes has answered a question online on the chat already. So thank you for doing that. Um, all three of you have implemented some type of e-commerce. Um, what I'd love to hear is a tip on how to get the e-commerce store going. I, I will tell you that even ourselves, over 50% of our clients in, integrated some type of e-commerce store, but not everybody's been successful um, because it you can't just launch it and people will come to it, right? You have to drive people there. So I would love just a couple tips on how to get that e-store going. Um, Dr. Bishop, I'm gonna start with you. Unfortunately, it's not a Kevin Costner movie where a Kevin Costner movie where you build it and they will come. <laughs> and so what we do is uh, on our receipt. So when patients buy stuff in the office on our receipt, it has our web store on there and how to get to it. And we tell people whenever they need more, they can just go on to the web store. Also, we email them uh, when they should be running out of stuff that, and we have the link to our web store there. But initially, for instance, if they buy a product, we send them information on the product um, or contact lenses. We do over two and a half million dollars a year on products and contact lenses. And so we have a lady here at the office who her job every morning is to go out and send emails to all of those people, which includes our web store. Um, so then the reminder goes out with our web store on it. And the, when they buy stuff at the office, we tell them about it. 
Um, it's in our social media stuff. And so we, we just really keep on hitting on it. Last year, COVID really helped our web store. And we probably did three times the amount uh, last year on our web store that we've done in previous years. And this year it's continuing on. Um, but if you get the people when they come in for their yearly eye exam, if you get them to have a year supply, then it, it uh, usually works out. But we've ended up selling dry eye products to people as far as Newfoundland and Ontario and all the way over to BC. So um, having, having that out there, uh, but like I said, it's been there for over 10 years. Dr. Bishop, is that, is that your team on your wall behind you? Is that all your yes, staff? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't get my uh, computer to connect <laughs> until you sent me the idea to restart. And so I got it restarted, uh, but we didn't figure out how to transfer from my son's phone to the That's computer. Okay. So We can hear you fine. Um, Dr. Shen Lee, a couple tips on on getting that e-commerce going? Uh, I'm actually, so for the e-commerce, uh, Wes, I think we have the same company, Get Lee is doing it. I'm working behind the scene with them, um, the subscription model, kind of like what I helped CLX build back in 2017. So I'm in the process filling out this big Excel spreadsheet, for example, on the foam, let's lash foam wash, uh, one bottle, 50 mil bottle, it's one month supply, 80 mil bottle, it's four month supply. So we're actually... Uh, I'm, I'm in the process of tagging every single uh, preservative free tier, every single product that we prescribe, including nutraceuticals. So as soon as the patient uh, leaves with that first bottle, first box of something, we're going to tag it. And uh, so we haven't sent anyone out yet. So it's in my, it's in my ball right now. I, I, I need to finish my part. So I'm super excited, but I think, just like Dr. Bishop said, right? So each office setup is different. It's important that you assign a designated uh, person. So each of our team members have a specific email. So for example, everything glass related, because we also have virtual frame try on and um, a virtual exam uh, appointment available built into the website. So for glasses, it's style at visionopti.com. So all across social media, internal, when the request comes in, so Carla, she's in charge of checking style at visionopti.com. Everything purchase appointment related, it goes to two. So we may especially purchase, we don't want to miss it. it comes to the back office, visionopti at visionopti.com and info at visionopti.com. And if it's a uh, myopia management, dry eye medical questions related, that email is tagged to go to 2020 at visionopti.com. So we have these things that are signed. So people are checking that throughout the day, but we're still working on increasing. When the first sale came through, I think it was a couple of months ago, we're so excited. Yay, so we actually bought our online store. Yeah. So our goal is to turn our online store into uh, like a regular where patients go on and purchase. And uh, better than that, we want that to be a automatic subscription model where patients just click the links, couple clicks away and another six month supply coming to them and another three month supply coming to them. So check with me again, the next webinar, Judy. I'll have, uh, I'll have much more uh, sales to report. So things well, are being worked on. I do want to just touch on the subscription because um, they say the millennial generation is a subscription generation. They're used right. to the Perfect. Netflix model and the monthly model. So I think it's a great strategy to move towards more of a subscription opportunity or offering. Doesn't mean don't try to sell the annual supplies. It means there's an option, right? I think it's for our practice, it's, it's, it really is like age. I haven't quite figured out. I think it's around the mid thirties. That's sort of like a cutoff. I love presbyopic. I love patients my age. They're so easy. <laughs> Yeah, we had to adapt for my uh, teens and young 20s and young 30 year olds. So a lot of the new strategy we're using. No, let's not get into age. <laughs> okay. Dr. McCann, we're going to we're going to let you wrap up this question is any other tips on getting e-commerce going? 
Yeah, so I do know that a lot of people struggle with e-commerce and I think a lot of people have signed up but haven't executed and got off the ground running with their e-commerce. I think the biggest challenge people run into is the, I'm signed up and I have all these patients, but how do I get them onto the store and signed up to the store? Yeah. So uh, we've created um, a notepad that we put into the exam room. And what the notepad is, is that it allows the OD to put the patient's name, what lens they're in, their wearing schedule, and how what supply they have left. And then they hand that to the front desk and then the front desk person will uh, register that patient because they have something that they physically can make sure they complete and they register that patient for the web store and they explain to the patient when they're checking out we're in the next 24 hours we're going to register for our web store it's called slightly you're going to get an email make sure you register in the next uh, 24 hour in the next 24 hours because you're going to get a ten dollar credit on your account for your next purchase Nobody likes to throw away money. So when they know they get that credit, they complete their registration and then we have them in the system. And because Sightly works where it auto reminds them when they're out, we've already programmed into the system from our notepad when that patient's gonna be out of their contacts. So it'll automatically remind them um, that they're going to be out. And so since um, COVID finished to now at one practice, we already done, we've already done 30,000 uh, through the web store uh, just with reorders because we, already prescribed those patients on the way out. So, and we do do a lot of your supplies. So again, we've recaptured a lot of patients that way. I, I think if you don't have a web store now, you have a huge opportunity to be able to launch your contact lens business to the next level, because it will be something that will be necessary to excel in contacts moving forward, because patients are used to buying online. And if COVID has definitely shown us that people are getting more and more comfortable and expect that opportunity and that that option to be available for you and whether it's our subscription model that they can manage online or whether it's a reorder that they get reminded of um, I think both options work for different types of patients and I think you have to have um, that in mind I, I am a shareholder with Sightly actually uh, and I am on their advisory panel to uh, help to develop more parts of it so uh, it's uh, disclosure there but it's neat because uh, they are integrating fitting box and uh, different things to allow to incorporate more of that online experience that marries the brick and mortar so that you get all the benefits of your brick and mortar uh, with the online experience so um, there's some neat options that are coming down the road direct ordering right from the manufacturers through the website so you don't have to go to J&J's portal to order and Cooper's Porter to order order in all the different portals. It'll do it all through your web store. So they're really trying to make our lives easier, which is great, and be competitive in the big in the big space. So uh, I think there's a lot of good things coming in, in the contact lens world. I think for us, so uh, I'm excited to see where it's going to go over the next few years. Right, and uh, we've been actively helping our marketing clients integrate e-commerce into their website. So it's a nice kind of easy transition from the website. Uh, as well as marketing, you know, to understand how you can market it. And that's part of my giveaway. So we are wrapping up. Hard to believe it's already been an hour. Um, if you have any more questions, please throw them in the chat. Um, the, the doctors can actually just answer some of them in the chat here. I want to give each of them an opportunity just to give us one last tip on growing contact lenses in your practice. Um, before I give you the giveaway. So why don't we just start with you, Wes? Um, what would be a, an extra tip? Uh, register for Contact Lens Web Store if you haven't already registered with the company. Uh, really focus on training your staff uh, because that will, and your associates, and know your contact lens stats for your practice. Like we, we break down our contact lens stats per associate and go over quarterly, what are their opportunities to improve patient experience and also their own uh, remuneration. Because when you, when you marry all that together and you can create a better remuneration for your associate and a better contact lens experience for your patient and a better overall patient experience for your patient, I think it's a win-win for everybody. And they're more apt to, to engage in that recommendation. We've had some of our associates increase their, their take home by 30% by making small changes in their talk track, really small changes. And so they're engaged and they want to improve even more. So I would say train your associates, your staff really well, and uh, get your web store off the ground if you don't already have one. Great. Dr. Bishop, one last tip. 
I think Wes pretty well covered that. The one thing I would add is for, for us, um, over 60% of our new patients are referrals from friends and family of patients. Um, the web Google ads doesn't even, we don't do Google ads anymore because from the cost of what they were into how many people came in, it wasn't worthwhile. Um, now maybe it will be after COVID's over, but having happy patients and welcoming them to share with their friends and family um, and giving them reasons why they should share with their friends and family um, is the one place which helps grow our contact lens practice um, after the first things that Wes said. <laughs> Great, thank you. And Dr. Shen Li, I'm gonna let you give your last tips. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna share my screen with the giveaway. So you go right ahead. Okay, so in addition to Dr. Bishop and Dr. McCann, uh, three things, always, always fit patients with the latest and the greatest premium technology. Let the patients try it, let the lens speak for itself. Number two, help your staff create the uh, watering process, make the process simple. And uh, number three, um, keep the price competitive to the big box retailers or your biggest big box retailer nearby. And back to staff training on having that conversation with the patients. Great. Well, thank you. Listen, we're all about keeping on time. So um, it is time to wrap up. I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, I want to thank Johnson & Johnson Vision for sponsoring again. We have another webinar coming up next month. Um, something a little different. We're going to be talking about analytics and, and what's important to be um, watching for as far as analytics in your practice. I really want to... Uh, end with this giveaway. So I wrote an article, which you're going to see out on our blog right away. And it is about targeting specific contact lens patients. And so specifically, like uh, people going on vacation, uh, specifically presbyopic patients, specifically sports related patients. So how can you target some of these patients is with targeted campaigns. We're giving away a folder full of social media posts we made to target specific contact lens patients. It's free, it's available for download right now. Go to Marketing for ACPs, hit that resources and contact lens link and you can download them right away. So thanks again, everybody. Hope to see you next month. Thank you, panelists. Really appreciate your time. Thanks, Trudy, for setting this up. Thank you. Thanks. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Trudy, again. And Thank nice you. meeting you, Don and Wes. You too. You too. Okay. All right. Trudy, do you want me to grab a photo for of us before we log off? Sure. Do you want me to make okay. it? No, that's all right. This is good. I actually have four of us on the side panel and with your uh, image. Okay, everyone, here's a key to doing a Zoom photo. Look into the camera and smile. Okay, that has to be a good one. I think I took five. <laughs> so just so you know, when you do a panel discussion with Dr. Shen Lee, you end up on her Instagram. So you're going to be on there shortly. <laughs> and everyone looks fabulous. All awesome. right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Take you guys. Care. Thank Thanks. you. Bye now.